Marlene, we've been promising everyone that we're going to do this vegetable jewelry, and everybody's been talking about it on the message board. You know, it's really funny too, Patty, because we did this years ago. I had students that made literally hundreds of these necklaces like 15 years ago. Ah. And then I stuck them all in a box and put them in the storage and had forgot about them until you came in one day. <laughs> <laughs> well, they just fascinate me. I would have never dreamed that these were actually potatoes and carrots, right? I know. And one of the ladies tried a broccoli. And hers turned out really cute. Mine didn't turn out so cute. So you know it might be something to experiment with more food. Okay. Well, what we're looking at here is uh, potatoes, isn't it? And carrots. And carrots. The carrots is the small necklace that has the little pearls on here. And what did you? What was the little thing you said about this? Well, I put 24 carrot pieces on, so I call it my 24 carrot necklace. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Uh, and you even have the earrings to match. Well, let's get busy and show everybody the trick to this. Oh, and it's just so easy. So it's really fun. So you just want to take a, a nice firm potato. And you don't have to cut it in any particular shape or anything. I usually cut it in half first. Okay. And then cut the halves in half. And then just come in and you're just cutting chunks. Aha. Uh -huh. Now these look pretty big. These are probably an inch or so, but they shrink almost half or more. Oh, they do. So they, they really shrink a lot. So And I don't have to peel it first. No, you don't want to peel it. That peeling okay. gives you kind of a nice nice texture. Okay. And then on the carrots, I use the little baby carrots because they're just kind of the right size for these little tiny chunks mm -hmm. and cut them at an angle. Oh, I see. And that kind of gives a different effect whenever they dry. Mm -hmm. And they kind of twist and dry. You know, it reminds me of the old apple head dolls that we used to do. Right. Kind of gets that effect. Okay. Okay. And then you want to take a nice heavy piece of string and you're just going to poke it through. Now they're a little hard to get through. Mm -hmm. So I used a pair of pliers and just pull them through. Now this really isn't a kid's project. This would be definitely an adult project. You know, we've done it with kids because this needle is just an upholstery needle and it's oh, not really? real sharp. Okay. So they can just take the, the pliers and pull it through and kids like doing this. Okay. And then the same thing, I usually put the carrots on one string and then the potatoes on a different string. Mm -hmm. But you just do the same thing. It's starting to smell good in here. Yeah. <laughs> and just keep stringing them until you have a lot of them on a string. And then mm -hmm. what I do with them is just take the string and put a loop in one end. Oh, how smart. And string it on. Sure. And then just hang it over a hanger. Mm -hmm. And then as you let it dry, you need to keep every day or so kind of moving them. Oh, all right. So they don't really come in. Because as they shrink, the hole shrinks too. And they can pull in so tight around the string that it's hard to get them off. So I, I just move these around every day or so. So we're and like creating little beads so that we can take them off and restring them. Right. Okay. And these have been on for a week and you really need to leave them about okay. that long. Let's hold that nice and still for the camera to see that. Well, they look pretty nasty right now, Marlene. I know, they really do. <laughs> They just look like moldy potatoes, don't they? <laughs> yes, but that is so neat because they are hard as rock. Yeah, they are, you know, and they can start getting hard within about three days, but you can still feel the flexibility of them, and while they get really hard is when you're ready to start painting them. Okay. So let's see what, how we paint these. And then, you know, I've tried lots of different paints, and a lot of paint just doesn't work. Um, I'm not sure why, but this uh, DecoArt Dazzling Metallic is the paint that I have found works the best. Okay. It's, it's good to know. It seems to have just more pigment or something in it, and... Um, it's really thick. It is. And it's beautiful because look at all the sheen in it in there. And I just take a toothpick and poke it through the hole. Uh-huh. And then just really pat that paint on really thick. Okay. Well, this is going to be pretty because you're going to have like a turquoise look, aren't you? Right. Ooh. <laughs> I wonder if this goes way, way, way back to even maybe Indian. Crafts. You know, I don't know where it came from to begin with. I've never found much about it uh, on the internet even. Mm -hmm. There was a lady in my class, an older lady, that uh, said she had done it as a child. And she started it up in my class about 15 years ago. So um, wow. that's how we got it started again. And then just put it in a styrofoam or something to dry. And mm -hmm. it only takes one coat of paint. Wow. Now, how did you get the uh, black on here? Did you... Uh uh, this one, I think I spray painted it black first just to see what oh. it would do, or maybe just painted it black. Okay. And um, then did the antiquing Yeah, and then on did top. the antiquing over the top. Okay. 
You could put more than one color on, you know. Right, right. Well, this has been really, really fun. You know, whenever you get into jewelry, you, you're always looking for new ideas and new beads, and this right. is perfect. And for the necklaces, I usually just string them then on the monofilament line, mm -hmm. you know, because it's just a nice, flexible line. And then the earrings, these are on monofilament, but then this one's just on one of the earring loops. Right. Oh, I love it, Marlene. Yeah, isn't this fun? <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much for sharing with everybody. I can't wait to see what you come up with next. <laughs> Thanks, Daddy.